uh, we have a speaker from New York, Los Angeles, Moscow, Bucharest, Hague, and Limassol will be joining quite soon. So first, I would like to uh, present um, uh, our panel today, which consists of um, uh, of the leaders of uh, major companies that are represented on the market. First of all, uh, not in the order, but uh, let's say in alphabetical order, Angela, she is a CEO of Avon. Uh, she has been working for this well-known company for 20 years in different positions. She has been uh, responsible for Central Europe as well. Uh, she has been appointed CEO in, Jan in January, and uh, she has been leading the business uh, through uh, many difficult difficulties and challenges and opportunities. So I'm sure that she will be able to uh, to share with us her experience. Jue uh, is the CEO of Holoplex. She has also been appointed the CEO in January, but she has a vast career in beauty industry. She served as CEO of, just to name a few, of Moroccan Oils, Trivic Tea, and Elizabeth Arden. Uh, and obviously, Olaplex right now is a trailblazer, creating new categories in, in hair care and working mostly in a professional um, hair industry. So it's uh, very important for us to know this perspective of the business as well. Um, Sonia is joining us uh, from uh, from United States. She is the founder and CEO of Beauty Barrage. Uh, she also has a consultancy supporting uh, emerging brands, so with uh, with full service uh, sales support. Uh, she is a beauty maverick, and she used to work for many uh, big transnational companies as well. She used to work for Avon. Uh, so I'm sure that she will give us also the perspective uh, for, uh, on uh, how the retail business is developing at the moment and uh, how she is dealing with her um, sales consultants who are helping to support the brands. Uh, and as soon as Ina will join, uh, I guess uh, we will uh, present her as well. Uh, just uh, a brief introduction. Um, uh, Ina is a founder and creator of a spa uh, brand, uh, which is a Cyprus Mediterranean spa brand, which is an indie brand, a small brand. So as you can see, we have a panel uh, of different kinds of um, representatives of different kinds of brands, different kinds of companies, different scope, different size, different target audience. So I'm sure that during this one hour, and a bit, we will have a full view of um, what to do and how to deal with what we're dealing at the moment, since we are all smiling and uh, we don't have COVID phobia. Yeah. Apparently, it's now, it's now a, new, uh, a new diagnosis that many people are experiencing at the moment. We are ready to deal with the challenges and see the opportunities in, in this in this turbulent times. So, Angela, would you like to start and say what kind of challenges have you been facing in the past two or three months? Sure. So, first of all, about crises. I mean, I have had the chance to work in many parts of the world where crisis is the in the daily menu. Because, uh, you know, in emerging markets, both politically, economically, socially, you encounter so many new situations that you don't have necessarily a playbook for. However, the coronavirus, it's really that kind of uh, hopefully just once in a lifetime event that it's recreating an opportunity for all of us to learn again from scratch. And um, the challenge goes on many dimensions. First of all, as a person, yes, because uh, you all go through the curve of first not believing it, being quite cynical about it, then going through the full anxiety and then again back to optimism and then what I can do about that. And, and professionally, the way I see this challenge and, and, and this crisis is that with every crisis, obviously there are finite losses. And remember, they are always finite. What, what should we, we shouldn't ever lose is a sense of purpose. Why are we playing the role that we play? And how can we take it uh, to, to a level that truly really leaves a legacy behind? Because through crises, uh, for me, has, it has been extremely important to, um, first of all, keep the purpose and people at heart. That shouldn't be compromised. 
And I know it's a paradox to be managed and can create quite a conflict of resources, of attention, of, of uh, managing, you know, which one comes first. That should never be a question. That should be the compass, getting us through the crisis. What's the purpose? How we keep our people at heart? And then, obviously, we all use a structured, uh, clear process approach for, for the business interest. Because again, the sustainability of our businesses means continued value for the communities we are part of. But even the role of the business in this time, uh, and especially in the challenge of coronavirus, that has such a big social, economical, uh, and, and health well-being impact on people, the role of the business, I see that is changing dramatically. We, we really need to, to uh, take our role of community citizens, if you wish, yes? If the hard times are revealing the true character of a person, imagine how this is for a business. And, and the way we now show how our business really care about community and provide tangible, practical support to every community we are part of at the global level, but equally in micro communities, I think it's key. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's really, really, really key. And, and I, I take this role with, with a passion like I have never had before, because um, now, now is the time for us also to reset the values um, that businesses have as, as players, yes. I agree with you. Jua, speaking about tail raising all up and speaking about giving to the community, what Angela said, that now is the time for the brand to show the guiding star and the true colors of the brand, how it supports the community. I was very much impressed by the initiative that you launched for the hairdressers. Uh, on the educational, um, uh, on, it, on online education, other things. Maybe you can also say a few words about how you as a person, which is also, Angela, you're quite right that being leaders, we are also people impacted by this situation only with bigger responsibilities, uh, but also as a CEO of Olaplex, how you are now working with your community. Yeah, I think, you know, I am the beneficiary of what I call an emotional intelligence that comes from the hairdressing community. I have never seen a community that has come together so quickly and so fast. And I really have to give them a lot of credit. Uh, and as you know, sort of, the, I would like to see myself more of a steward rather than as a leader in that I am the shepherd, right? Currently trying to lead the team and focus on what we do best which is difficult because of all the challenges ahead and all of the empathy that we have is not going to put food on the table. So as a brand, what we are doing is to ensure that we allow anyone in our space that wants to make an, a revenue and a generate an income, we provide the platform for them. And what do I mean by that? I mean that we've created all of us have heard of, those of us who are on direct-to-consumer platforms have heard of affiliate programs. But affiliate programs generally benefit the end consumers. We created an affiliate program that benefits the professional hairdressers. So what we did was we told them, you sign up with this affiliate program and we will give you a 35% commission. With that, their clients will buy the products from us but because we give that 35% commission is essentially almost selling it at a distributor price. So we really don't make as much, but at the end of the day, we know that they can sustain some sort of an income. And, and to be very honest, I was very impressed with the consumers, the end clients for doing what they've done. Because by, by buying on our website at no discount, no GWPs, they did this not only because they love the brand, but they love their hairdressers more. And they were willing to pay full price for them. So I have this newfound respect you know, for, for a community like this. And therefore, it is beholden on me that I do not disappoint them. So as a leader of this, you know, of Olaplex, mm -hmm. it is more than just Olaplex because Olaplex has the, has the ability to really get a lot of um, love from the community. Therefore, it will be very, very detrimental if I come in and put on my corporate hat rather than my connection. You know, that is, 
I need to use data to convince my investors that why this is the right decisions, but I need to use my heart to connect with the team. This is very good. Data and heart, uh, the connection of data and heart uh, and with Angela's purpose, uh, that the sense of purpose is very important. Sonia, what kind of advice are you giving now to your clients and how you are dealing with your employees? Are you a leader, a shepherd? What kind of emotional intelligence do you now find uh, with your staff and with the people with all the retail stores in U.S. being closed right now? How do you deal with this? Huh. <laughs> I think this is probably the biggest challenge that I have ever been faced with. So unlike um, Angela, um, I've never had anything this big um, happen and to me when I was leading such a big um, uh, group of people. So I am all of those things. I have to be a leader sometimes. I have to be a shepherd sometimes. I have to be a friend sometimes. Um, and I have to tell you that um, I'm just I'm just honest with my team. I tell them what's happening. Um, I talk to them about what's uh, going on in the industry. I'm I also can't help but be this um, very positive uh, person. That's just my nature. And I kind of paint the future and I tell them all that this is an opportunity for us to learn more and to sort of reset and come out even stronger. So in this time where maybe the stores are closing and everyone thinks, oh my God, this is it for Beauty Barrage. Um, no, what we're doing is we are make, making sure that we're pressing on with more education, that we are taking, um, you know, the, the fact that we've trained our people on social media to do social selling and also to really use that as a clientele effort with their clients that go into store and let them know when they're in store and what they're doing. So now they're talking to them about the brands and they're doing a lot of live streaming. We're using a lot of the tactics that we've learned that China's been doing. So that's what we're doing now and that's um, how we pivoted. And uh, so that's uh, basically what we're doing is education. We're even talking about how we're going to redesign um, our demos in person because that's a big thing. It's all about sanitation now and how making sure that that's all, uh, you know, retailers are asking us, how, what what do we do now? So, um, and be, because we're such a partner to not just brands, but also retailers, we wanna make sure that we're helping them having those answers and we're putting together a bunch of, of uh, modules that'll be, uh, ready and a lot of answers where we can play together and make sure that we're um, being that partner not only to our clients but also to our uh to our retailers and the customer yeah. yeah i've 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 read online that you are doing right now a very uh, I've read online that Beauty Barrage right now, all your sales consultants are advising clients online uh, what to buy, uh, that they're keeping in touch with their clientele online and advising them what to buy. And then they go through the retail channel, uh, through, through online uh, channels. And actually, this is when we, in retrospective, when we look at what happened in China and in Korea, that online sales actually save the day since the uh, brick and mortar retail experienced uh, closures and a radical drop of sales the online sales have been able um, uh, to to pr produce a steady channel of communication uh with the end consumer so this is sonia this is what you are doing right now that that your your consultants are actually working online and diverting people uh, for online purchases. Right. My employees, they are all um, online. They have a code from the re from the brand that is leading to their uh, their dot com or if they want to send it to the retailer when we have a specific hashtag. So there's definitely ways that we measure this because 
we want to make sure that we can come out of it and say, oh, this is what we're doing for this brand, this is what we're doing for that brand. I have to tell you that this is um, it keeps us all um, engaged, um, excited for the brands that we're using um, uh, and, 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 and helping. Um, we also, another thing that I didn't say is we do a lot of Zoom calls together. We do masking day, like we have one set up where we're all gonna use the turban from Aquis. Um, and, um, you know, I'll all have masks on. We're pretty goofy and that's what connects us too. So like Julie said, it's connection, connections. I play with that and I love it, you know? So the fact that I'm doing it with them, um, I'm, you know, I love these people. We wouldn't be Beauty Barrage without my team. So um, I cannot sleep if I'm not taking care of them. Good. And uh, Angela, in one of your interviews, you've said that empowering women through beauty, empowering women through beauty is one of your goals. And mm -hmm. since Avon is, is very strong in social selling, uh, can you please um, describe, um, obviously you get a lot of questions and a lot of frustrated people. Uh, and obviously you are, as a company, very digitally enabled and you probably um, more ready than any of us uh, to these challenges, but uh, how do how do you find um, or how do you motivate your uh, team? And how is the social selling going right now? We are we are a five million strong network. God bless them all. Powerful women, inspirational women, sharing beauty with their friends, consulting on beauty. Um, uh, and, and equally driving our purpose, yes, of empowering women in their own micro communities. And I feel extremely proud of how the community came together. It's unbelievable. And back to what uh, Joué said a little bit uh, earlier, it, you discover new dimensions of humanity, the way the communities really stood up to, uh, through this challenge to support one another it's, it's, it's not something, I mean, you would hope for, but um, we are discovering every day. And um, in, in this moment, it's not only what we provide from the center to them. You should see the shared voice in the community, the way they support one another in our platforms. Mm -hmm. Happy hours, yoga hours, skincare classes, makeup parties. Um, um, giving each other, uh, you know, hints, uh, cooking classes. So the community comes together. It's so much more than beauty. It's a more of a life connection. And I think this by itself, it's inspiring us to really do the extraordinary. Uh, on one hand side, we are a very high touch business. You call us high tech, maybe not to the extent that we want it to be. And we, we have a clear transformation plan. But what has happened um, that again I, I couldn't I couldn't testimate even a month of, uh, ago was that you never know how strong you are unless uh, the only choice you have is to be strong. So the IT teams in the company, uh, not even being in the same place, you know, all virtually connected, have done the extraordinary to allow in a very high touch business to allow direct deliveries to the customers of our representatives, knowing that she cannot, she's stranded at her home. So we wanted to protect her earning. And in many of our countries already we are deploying right now, uh, direct, uh, direct service uh, to, to their friends. So we only enable her just to manage her business online and, and making sure that her community uh, is served. Because much of our portfolio, it's still essentials. Yes, it's about cleanliness, uh, and, and what we thought is the um, essentials would be just the soap and the antibacterial gel. Now the community is coming back and pushing back like, hey, we still use skincare, hair, I need my hair dye. Uh, hey, you know what, I want to cheer up and I want some makeup. I know nobody sees me, but I still want to put that lipstick on because that makes me feel better. So we are helping them with digital tools, trainings, daily engage, engaging um, uh, communication and uh, activities. Um, we invested tremendously in allowing not only these deliveries to our representative customers, but as well to protect their earnings. Again, purpose comes first. And, and we know it's going to be tough for the next three months till, till we come at least to a new normal. The normal so uh but we, we understood again that the purpose comes first and purpose is our people 
uh, it's their earning, it's empowering women. Uh, and the other one I want to add, and this is what I mean, but it's extremely important. It's uh, pro by protecting the purpose is not just the overall business sustainability and the employability of our people. Uh, and putting food on their table. It's also understanding the full impact in the community of this coronavirus, like the exacerbation of domestic violence, as an example, for women who have no other choice, yes, but being trapped with that abuser and what we can do in our community. That is what empowering women means for me. It's also, it's not only beauty, because lipstick can never cover uh, a bruised soul, but, but uh, well-being, dignity, financial independence, yes? So we are trying to understand uh, right now of how to fully deploy all our energy and resources to support this first. I agree with you. And speaking, uh, this this is very important because the, the virus um, has uh, at one point accelerated all our online initiatives that were in the pipeline, but at the same time, uh, makes us to look deeper into the purpose of the business. And it's very important, not only for our clients, but also for our employees, because this story is that they're working for a company that has a certain purpose at heart is, is extremely motivational, that they, they have an input into the company that brings back to the community on, on a larger scale. And um, Joy, speaking about high-touch uh, industries, obviously hairdressers are the main um, impacted um, beauty salons in general are probably the second most impacted uh, industry at the moment because retailers at least can sell online, but hairdressers uh, can only give advice to their clients online, but they can't physically do anything. What do you think is more important for hairdressers at the moment? Uh, inspiration, obviously income, preserving the income, and you have spoken about this initiative, but also knowledge, inspiration, good mood. What, what, what are you doing right now as far as um, keeping up the morale of, of, of your clients? Yeah, it's a really good question. So I kind of sum it down into three E's. You know, you embrace them emotionally. You educate them because you give them the resources and the tools to really come out of this ahead of the curve. And you, you basically empower them. So when you, when you do all those three E's, you know, you embrace, you educate, you will end up empowering them. So with that said, what we have done is that we are joining forces with our competitors in the hair care industry to really come together and give virtual hair classes. Because it doesn't make sense where all of us are trying to do the same thing on our own. This is a time, I think Sonia mentioned it and Angela mentioned it, this is not the time for business as usual. This is the time to come together as global citizens and ask ourselves, how can we put really our customers first? And our customers doesn't have to be just an end consumer. It is our community, the hairdressers. And especially for a brand like Oloplex, when we first started, they were the ones who embraced us. There was no marketing. There was no, you know, uh, you know any kind of uh, ability for them to showcase what that brand, what our brand is. I mean, even the name itself wasn't intuitive. So it was really the, um, the emotional embrace that the hairdressers have given us that now we're returning. And when I say we embrace them, it doesn't mean that we just kind of, you know, are there for, for them, but we really do something for them. We teach them how to retail. Up until recently, up until this pandemic, most of them will tell you, I'm an artist. I don't sell. I don't like to sell. But now they realize that it is important for them to be well-rounded. And this is the time to give them those tools. So the education piece comes in. And once they have that, they will feel really empowered. And when a woman is empowered or when an individual is empowered, you can achieve anything you set yourself to do. And I think ultimately, this is what is so important. Out of this crisis, there will come a lot of good things, just as a lot of bad has happened. But I think, I believe, like, it's, there's a Greek mythology that so you know, out of the ashes will come a phoenix. Mm -hmm. And I believe there will be a lot of phoenixes in the time, in, you know, in the next year or two, because people are going to sit back and they're going to realize we've got to be more human. You know, healthcare, especially in the U.S., 
is not the way you know in Europe and in parts of Asia should it is. And we need to take people not because you know it's the right thing to do, but because it's the humane thing to do. Very interesting. And speaking about phoenixes, uh, Sonia, you you have a brand consultancy, and I believe that there are certain unfortunate brands that have chosen the, the, this this exact timing to do a launch to enter the market, so they don't have that much of chances to come from the ashes and, and have rebirth because they probably are not as sustainable at the moment. So what would you advise the, the, new, the new brands uh, uh, to, to wait for six months, to launch and embrace the community, or what would be your, um, your vision of that? I definitely tell them not to wait. Everyone is online. So you have more eyeballs now than you ever would. Every retailer, wants to make sure that you're bringing a community to them. So if you build that community now and start that DTC plan even stronger and be more aggressive with it, making sure, and when I say aggressive, I don't mean like sell, 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 promo, 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 but it's more of like, what is the ethos of your brand? What do you stand for? Do you understand and, um, and, and have empathy over what's happening in the world today and trying to help them forget a little bit or what your brand stands for? all those different beliefs. So now's the time to talk about that. And now's the time to also uh, partner with uh, any any type of strategic alliance that's meaningful to the brand, that speaks more about the brand and who you are, that people want to connect to ultimately. And that's why they're going to shop and, and discover and want to go deeper and maybe buy. But that's the first thing that you have to do. Now you've got to really talk about your brand, build that community, and then go into store. It's okay. Everyone is on the same place right now. So this is a great time to start to talk about your brand. So I say don't stop, just press forward. Yeah. And Angela, do you do you feel that uh, obviously we're talking about uh, that everybody is online, but obviously there are a lot of webinars, a lot of streams, a lot of communication going in. Um, what do you think? And since we, we've touched upon every speaker today uh, on the panel had said about uh, emotions, about connecting, about community, about being human. Uh, what, what do you think? It's is it a time to approach clients with an aggressive sales speech or it's more of a time of, uh, I don't know, discounts, motivation, wellness, embracing, advice? How do you actually do the communication right now with the client so that he doesn't find it offensive? Actually, it's very exciting what is going on right now because you do see a new profile of cust customer emerging. And I only have a few of the sound bites of how they behave because obviously we don't have yet the, the full magnitude of all studies. But I'm, I'm sure and both Sonia and Jue or already have heard that uh, we get much more value-aware customers on, on one hand. Side. So they want to be careful about the money they pay for the quality they get. Um, then it's even beyond the pricing. They want to uh, create, they want to have an emotional attachment. To whom do they give that money? And, and, and who is going to profit from those money? Which is very interesting. It has never been an issue that they cared about. They didn't care where the profit goes. Now they look, I mean, is this an organization that is going to share these profits for a higher pur purpose? Uh, am I going to buy from my neighbor or from my hairdresser, as we just said, and it, in this way, knowing that I'm helping her too? So people are looking for the instant gratification that goes beyond the service and the quality of the product or about the promotion. Those will stay. We, we still want to be surprised and uh, we want to have an exciting shopping experience. People will look for a much profound gratification of them feeling that with every purchase decision they make, is it a service or a product? they actually contribute to their community in a tangible manner. And we, and we do get more and more than, than ever before. And I think it's time for businesses to redefine. It's not just a matter of om omni-channel presence. It's a matter of meaningful connection to create with customer and transparent value chain. It's another one that's it's extremely careful. Where does money go? 
was because if they only go to one uh, shareholder or a series of shareholders and that's it, uh, people would uh, immediately disconnect from that brand. And, and, and that balance would, would uh, recreate uh, the new game plan. To me, it's a completely new, uh, new uh, trend out there that is going to redefine the marketplace. And in a beauty industry, because it's an emotional, uh, as well, emotional purchase, uh, I think that that um, personalization of the relationship with the brand as well uh, on top of the social responsibility and understanding of the money would also play play a role. Because women are tired to be uh, treated like a segment. And now with the crisis that every uh, one of us is asking why, what's my purpose, where am I going? Even deeper questions like who I am and so on. I hope those don't, don't go too deep, but still enough for people to redefine the way they want to drive their life going forward. That definitely touches beauty as well. So to whom am I sharing that? I'm not necessarily sharing it over the counter with a retailer. I'm looking, looking for a meaningful connection to understand how beauty will help me inside out True. instead of outside in. So the values will change. Uh, this is how I see it. And honestly, I applaud, I welcome this change. Um, it's going to be a challenge for the way we play in the business, but such a gratification for us as, um, as for, for us as a new chapter for humanity. Yeah, and uh, uh, Julia, thank you very much, Angela. Julia, you mentioned that you have to balance data and heart when making uh, certain decisions and since we, we've spoken a lot about community and emotional purpose uh, you 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 uh, operate in different markets as Olaplex as well so you might have maybe some insight on the data uh on on on, on asia and china that's that that is already recovering at the moment so maybe you can show us some light in the end of the tunnel what is the uh, what are the sales and what are what are the learnings because i think that one of the benefits of working in different regions and being a global company is that you already have a certain learning in in, in other geographies considering this crisis uh, so can you share with us um is there revenge shopping or not right. well let's put it this way i think you know if you look at what's happening uh in the globe Asia obviously is recovering a little bit ahead of Europe and the US. And they, on many levels, have always been, you know, DTC first. They are very savvy when it comes to the technology piece, especially China. And if you think about it, this is the time for us when we are locked down, you know, and sheltered in place, you know, in our respective communities to really take learnings. And I think Sonia mentioned that learning from you know, what Asia is doing from the from not only their social selling aspects, their direct to consumer tactics, but their social platforms from TikTok, you know, to their, their Timor Global, Alibaba, WeChat, Taobao in China. There's a lot of that. And also learn from them how caring they are. I have not received so many emails since this time. And most of them are from vendors that is a little bit far removed from myself, that works with my team or my prior companies, sending me WeChat you know, notes, just asking me how I'm doing, not asking for business, not asking me to consider them you know, to be a trade partner or a TP, but really concerned as to how I'm doing. And they're like quoting me statistics, what's happening in China. So I believe that what is important for us is to take advantage of where Asia is going, learn from them, use that learning to pivot here in the US or for the European markets, and then be able to share that with the industry. Do not be selfish. I think a lot of people feel like, okay, if I have this knowledge and I protect it, I will come out of this ahead of the curve. Angela mentioned it really well. At the end of it, it is about how we come out of this as truly more thoughtful than where we came in from. And, and I think, you know, what is good, what I've been seeing is that the ability to pivot into another market, which is a new market for a, a brand like Olaplex, but also more importantly, we are able to pivot into a platform that you can really implement very quickly. 
So when we saw that our business in, in hairstyling and in the hair salons were really going to take a truly big hit, we started looking at direct-to-consumer opportunities in Asia, especially in Korea, in China, in Japan, as well as in Australia and New Zealand. And that has really, while it's not completely mitigated the sales loss, it has definitely been able to shore up a lot of the anxiety. And I think brands, as they begin to look at that, should not be afraid, even if they're not a direct-to-consumer brand, and they feel like they don't have the technology to support, there are other programs out there. In the US, you don't need to build your own website. Go to a place like Shopify. You know, do something that you don't have to create from scratch the back end. Not everybody had to do that. I mean, 10 years ago, you may have to. And now I just want to kind of give a shout out to people who want to donate and want to help. Don't try to create your own foundation. This is not the time to, quite, to create your fund and then try to promote your own fund. In every industry, there's a trade association. In our industry, there is the Professional Beauty Association that has already set up in 10 days the COVID-19 relief, COVID relief fund. And in 10 days, they have already given to every applicant that has applied for relief versus the American government with the SBA loan fund. They still haven't been able to get anything in place. So I feel very strongly that we need to support the trade association that represents that trade, donate to that, and really drive engagement there. Don't try to create your own relief fund. The number of times I've been hearing different companies and different individuals coming together to do that, you are wasting time and you don't have the knowledge to run through the bureaucracy to make sure the right people are getting those relief funds. I agree with you. It's very, it's, it's interesting how we've been always connected through social media, but now we are more connected than ever. Uh, and a lot of us relied on the governments to resolve our issues. And now it's the, uh, it's in the hands of community, how we do that. And speaking about the community and learning, I, I actually like uh, what you are talking about sharing and cooperation, about putting the competitiveness aside and sharing the common knowledge. It's, 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 it's a very strong point for us to be able to move forward. And speaking about learning from what we are going through and opportunities in the future, Sonia, now that all of your consultants are basically forced to work online will you be strengthening after in in our post covid new normal reality will you be strengthening uh that actually channel of people continuing to consult online or you will shift back to brick and mortar <clears throat> well you know it's so funny we're making a lot of decisions right with um not a lot of uh data so it's important for us to be able to shift whatever it is that we're doing every week as we learn more before we got to covid my team was already um on social like i mentioned before and that's what was helping to drive to retail for events or for uh just that they're in store doing a demo or maybe they had a gift of purchase or a promotion for a certain brand so today for sure um the way that I see it going into the future is that they're going to be using, applying a lot of the different learnings. They'll probably do more live streaming going forward. They'll be working on, you know, making sure that they're still uh, driving to dot com. So these are all conversations to have with our brands, planning that out, seeing what effectiveness it had going now today that we can take out to the future. So absolutely, I think it only makes us stronger. And it's uh, a great tool for our team to to be able to have and help uh, the brands succeed. And I think that we have questions coming in. So there is a question. Uh, I think that we'll we'll take some questions right now. Uh, and uh, uh, there is uh, a question for Angela. What education did you take to refine your communication style? You're being admiring, thoughtful, enthusiastic. Uh, so she's proud to be a Romanian like you. So what education did you take to re refine your communication style? Um, 
I, I feel I feel embarrassed. I really feel embarrassed. So for sure, it's a Romanian just like myself. So then um, I feel embarrassed. It's not coming from an in, na native English or an America. But um, I, I thank you. Thank you very much. I think it's it's all about you know being authentic mm -hmm. with all our with all our limitations. I mean, just 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 uh, express what you feel. People will get you. Yes, at the end, it's not even a matter of how skillful you are to choose a word or another. Yes, and no matter the language, I learned Turkish. I mean, you should see, I, it's my terrible attempts to speak Turkish or Serbian or, or Russian. I always cared about speaking to people in their own language and, and understand it's not going to be perfect. Purpose above perfection, by the way. And my purpose was to connect. And, and I think when people understand that your message is really coming through your eyes, the words, at the end, the, 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 the choice of the words, and uh, are they coming as a uh, perfect in, in that language, might not count that much. I do mean, it. This is yeah. Do it. There is, um, as a salon owner, there is David who joined us some time back, and he is a salon owner. He's in search of that kind of message that would keep him going with his employees. They have 150 employees, and they consider them part of the big family. And he says that what, what you're saying helps refine and define the message to him. So I it resonates in the heart of beauty salon owners. We've been talking a lot about hairdressers as, as um, what is your advice to beauty salon owners? Because they have rent to pay, they have a lot of obligations. What would you say? I think, you know, salon owners are very selfless, right? I mean, what they could easily have done is to basically say, look, I can't really pay any more of the you know, base salary, I cannot give you guys any more benefits, you know, I'll forlorn the, the, the hairdressers and then you can come back later. So I think the brands that they have supported all this time should really look at them and say, what can I do for you? If I was David, I would go to every brand that is in his salon and ask them to create a platform or to provide their website platform for an ability for their hairstylists to reach out to their clients for business. Because at the end of the day, those brands that are in his salons are obviously brands that he has supported over the years. He's been buying it from a distributor, displaying it in his salon, using the products in the back bar. Go back to those brands and ask them, not for charity, but for support in giving them and keeping them in business online. And no brand would turn them away because every brand has an online footprint and they can use that footprint for good. Good. Thank you. And Sonia, I guess this is a question to you. With so many products and brands on the market, how do you break through all the noise to bring out the signal? Uh, this is a question from an, a, a beginner entrepreneur and she's starting a startup in microbiome. Uh, in the future, and and how do you, with, with all the noise that's going in, what is your advice to a startup? How to reach the consumer now? Well, you have to start, I think, um, like I mentioned before, I think it's important to, you know, tell the story of your brand, make sure that it's, uh, you have a point of difference. There is a lot Just I think we've just clutter. So yeah. it's important to oh, sorry. Did you lose me? Uh, yeah, we lost you. Can you get back a little bit? Oh no, sorry. I keep moving. I was okay. I was saying story, that okay. Yeah, tell your story and make sure that it's uh it, there is a distinct point of difference. There's a lot of clutter out there. You want to make sure that your brand stands apart from all of that. So, you know, the white space. Talk about the white space. Talk about what you stand for. Um, have that empathy of where we are today if you're coming out today. Um, there is uh, also the question to all, uh, all, of, all of all three of you. Um, 
what would be the number one thing that you will cut out of your business once we get out of the crisis? Hi, I mean, I had that insight for before, but uh, now I realize what the nonsense, all the hierarchical, bureaucratic, uh, corporate process is. I mean, yeah. it, just empower people. If they are the right people, they will, you know, in the right, in the, the, the framework that we share, they will do wonders for you. I mean, there is such a multiplication power if you only trust, like in a network of professionals, no pyramids, leader is not on the top, is not behind, is just there, you know, um, in between connecting everyone and then and, and creating that enabling environment for everyone to succeed. So to me, I would, I would definitely now with this proof of concept of, of seeing how in times of crisis, I have amazing, um, absolutely amazing individuals and teams in Avon fully empowered to act at, with speed. And we, we developed in the last two months more than we've done in a flight plan of three years, all because we couldn't afford any longer to follow the corporate hierarchical process. And wonders happened. So what I, that would be the very first thing I would, I would uh, take out. So it's actually a continuation of what Angela is saying. We have always been a remote culture. So the, all of the employees at Olaplex works from home and works remotely. And I would like to continue to pres preserve that because obviously we have had new uh, investors and wonderful new owners, and we are exploring you know, the structure of the business. And with what has just happened, it is very clear that it does work. When people are able to connect with purpose, as Angela mentioned, and also able to know that while we are all working separately, we are really together in terms of where we want to go as a co company. And because we have always done this, we actually have been quite a resource to more established companies. So our investor has other companies that are struggling to work from home. And little old us are able to offer very practical advice as to how to do that. You know, from the time that you wake up to, to Angela's point, Put on you know an outfit feel like you're going to work you may not wear as much makeup you may not wear as you know dress as fancy but you still want to dress up go get your cup of coffee or tea whatever you know suits you and then sit down and that's the start day and i think a lot of this and even how you look on zoom meetings a lot of women don't realize that it is important to actually and i am i'm doing it this you know which i'm not following my advice it's actually very good to pull your hair back it actually looks a lot better on at, at, in meetings. So, you know, just giving people little tips like this to show them, you know, what it means. Oh. I, I think it's very rewarding. Yeah, I, and, and to me, I think uh, ultimately, if we can preserve the good, throw out the bureaucracy, throw out the bad, and really embrace the people who are delivering the bottom line. You know, as leaders, we are very fortunate because we now have the wisdom and the experience to know the good you know, workers, the good operators. Let's reward them. And, and perhaps you know, this is you know, sort of uh, down the road, but think of a lot of benefits that could help them that's outside of compensation. You know, whether it's flexible working hours, job sharing, allowing them to spend time with their family. People will come out of this realizing that Family unit is really important. I mean, obviously, the cross side is someone will say that they're going to be more divorces because couples have never spent more time <laughs> than they have ever before. But you also grow to love the family unit that you have, you know, spending the time with your children. So I think, you know, I, I might have digressed, which I always do, but I think, you know, preserving the good and in recognizing what is in, inhibiting you from doing great things will be what I, I would want to do when I come out of this. Sonia, what about you? Well, we're so different than the other two big companies. We've only been around for, I mean, I have a lot of people on my team, but we've only been around for about four and a half years. And we, you know, what I would say that we would do um, or continue to do going forward that we just started to do is the communication. <clears throat> Our communication is different now. Um, where I'm reaching out to my field team every week. And I have to tell you that that feels great just getting the communication back from them. 
because they know that I'm thinking about them. They know that th how I feel about how we're not a, you know, a company without them and how, you know, we, uh, so what I think honestly is that this will help me even with like new ideas and getting them involved and all of that. So that's something that I'm excited to continue to, um, to use as a tool rather than just having like we talked to uh, Angela talked about maybe a pyramid type of a situation, but no, it's just more open type of a forum. So Candice, I guess it answers your question uh, when you said about uh, our the uh, the observation of being hundred percent remote and how they can take more ef effectively onward. So basically. Uh, uh, we have answered your question that it's it's an issue of hierarchy, it's an issue of communication, empowering people, and 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 rewarding and recognition not only in the classical corporate way, the way we've always thought about it. Um, and I guess They must have a question for you, Anna. You should probably answer a question. Uh, what is it? I don't see a question for me. Um, we we have Maria who thanks everyone for wisdom and experience. There is also advice to use the lighting that shines on your face, ideally just uh, above your eye level, so that camera is not below you. Yeah. Okay. So we'll work around that. Um, uh, uh, so tomorrow on Zoom and Microsoft Teams, we will definitely be stars with all this. <laughs> um, tomorrow I'm going to try my new style with my team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, I think that, uh, uh, what do you think about post-COVID world? Will it be a lot of reflection on, we, we already came to a conclusion that actually beauty products are not a luxury. It's not an everyday necessity. It's, it's an everyday necessity for many women. And obviously uh, COVID-19 will, will highlight a lot of social issues, uh, unemployment, uh, the companies without purpose, uh, governments that are not able to support uh, their citizens, healthcare systems. But also, as Angela had said, we had a lot of, we have a lot of time to reflect on, on our lives uh, and, and, and our purpose and, and, and why and what are we doing in this world. So do you think that um, post-COVID-19 world will be consumer driven? So, you know, revenge shopping and everybody will go to restaurants and buy tons and tons of cosmetics or people will be more cautious, more concerned around wellness, health care and more philosophical and uh, and 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 different in a way. Will the humanity reemerge as Phoenix, as Joy said, in a totally different capacity or will still um, be consumers i mean we are social animals so we will definitely want to come out and be part of society again but i think we're going to go at this in a more in in with more empathy and i think we will understand that less is more and the fact that you know we are going to be more of an advocate and an activist i know for for sure myself i'm going to use whatever leverage I have both as a company and personally and really be very active in championing for health rights and uh, better wages for you know for workers for hourly workers here in the US and I have the capacity to do it because I'm, I'm with women's group that are always in at Washington DC I used to kind of say oh what can I do but I know that coming out of this there's a lot that we can do and I'm going to do my part so I feel like the world is going to become a lot more empathetic Good. Angela, what do you think? I think beauty will become more of a, will, will have a more of an activism, I would say. It will be a movement for, for good instead of just, um, uh, you know, um, stating something. So it would be, it would be a force for good. And, and um, 
we are all its servants. The beauty will get its holistic uh, definition of inside out, back to what you said, the balance of well-being and just makeup. And um, we, we are going to see a, a completely different way to connect one with another that goes beyond just uh, age segment, therefore these are the products or mm -hmm. status, uh, you know, what status want you want to inspire with, therefore these are the products or these are the brands. People will not relate to those any longer or become a beauty choice will become a much more personal choice. Good. And, and, Sonia, more what, and Sonia, what do you think? I just think that we should all remember what how beauty started. Beauty is about giving people self confidence, and I don't. And that that's part of you know um, feeling right mentally, right? And going through what we're going through right now is also part of that. So we make people feel good, and I think that that's the first. That's the foundation of beauty, and so people want to feel good. So I am again the optimist, and I do think that you know. Thank God we were we had a great um, economy before this. I believe we'll get there again. And um, you know, I I just think that you know I agree with everything that um, Jury said and everything that Angela said. And at the end of the day, it's all about making people feel better. And I think that our industry has a lot of heart anyway. So I I, I that's why that's why I love what we do. I have one prediction. I think it took it will take a pandemic, and it's taking a pandemic to have more female leadership in the beauty world. The empathy and the understanding, the soft touch, I think is now being very valued, and I predict that that will happen. Take it from women CFO CEOs, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's for sure. And I think that we will take uh, one more question about. Uh, AR and uh, so augmented reality and artificial intelligence. I think it's going to be the last. Uh, so, how do you employ AI, AR uh, in your world right now? It's also part of the the personalization. Yes. Yeah. So for us, on one hand side, we are counting on peer to peer beauty recommendation uh, to create that personal touch, and there is no, I would say. Um, um, no CRM out there that would guess that I'm in love as an example. It's only my friend that would know or my personal petition or my hairdresser who would know that. Yeah. Uh, however, data science in this moment is giving us completely new ways to collect data that we can use it as well for good. And not only personalizing from business perspective, the relationship with every uh, customer, but also anticipating what are the trends under and how can we how can we fulfill their needs and and beyond even that we can we can use those social data to also anticipate the overall social community needs yes if it, we come back to purpose from product to purpose so ai uh, i think now, right now it's becoming um, must have must have a uh, um, tool uh, must have platform in every industry and even more so in beauty. I, I think you know, what is so interesting now is that given that so many brands have, have started doing you know more business online, we used to have such trouble getting data sometimes from the retailers. Today we have no excuse. Our own website is a rich platform of data and using AI to really consolidate that data to communicate to really what I call engage, connect, and convert a customer is going to be key. And augmented reality for a business like us is truly powerful because we can give people different types of looks without them really having to color their hair or wash their hair and treat their hair each and every time. So we partner with different augmented reality organizations like Perfect Corp out there to really showcase what your hair can look like short, long, different style without stressing it. Because anytime you touch your hair, Anytime you comb it, you cause damage. So we don't want women to damage their hair unnecessarily. Good. And Sonia, what do you think? Augmented reality, I, AI in your business? I think it's a great tool. Um, we have a proprietary app 
that we've created. So even when our people go into store, you know, hygiene and sanitation, it's all going to change now, right? So it's even about touching the customer that we have to think about. So I think these things will be great tools for us and they'll be able to, you know, use that. And we would need to partner with some, you know, I, I think those are all things that we've considered and talked about and we want to use more of. So absolutely a, a big objective for us. And speaking, getting back to soft touch, we've been talking about the value of soft touch and female leadership uh, that uh, with, with our emotional uh, intelligence uh, will be able to take the industry through the crisis and we will have more female leaders. But obviously some of our, there is a question about what do you do when you are scared? What do you do when you are helpless? What do you do? How do you motivate your families? And I think that what is your mantra? What do you tell yourself in the morning when you are a little bit scared? Uh, and uh, uh, Joy was saying that we've been, and Angela was saying that we were going through different waves. We, we first, we had skepticism. Uh, then we kind of rejected the situation. We thought that it will not, be us who will be affected by that. What is your mantra? What do you to say uh, to yourself in in the morning to keep you going and give the energy to your staff and to the whole industry? I just tell okay. myself I can only control what I can control. So you know, I, I just tell myself I can only control what I can control, and I go out there doing just that. Because if I fret and worry about things I cannot control, then I'm useless to anyone, even myself. Okay, Angela. So, okay, so now I'm a little bit embarrassed. So what I say to myself, I actually say it even out loud. It's, it's amazing how much it's uh, improving your energy when you say something out loud to yourself. I know it sounds crazy, um, but even I, I, I say to myself, this is going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be an amazing day. I'm going to make most of it. Yes. So this keeping the vibe, uh, keeping the vibe attitude for me, it really keeps me open to whatever the challenge is. As long as I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, in a death uh, under a death threat, uh, threat that day. Every, anything else, you know, you 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 can deal with. You can find solutions. You can learn about it. You can connect to people. Learn from the others. So keep the vibe would be the mantra. Keep the vibe. Sonia, what is your mantra? So my, my mantra is uh, one of our core values at my company. It's called, it's evolve or die. If we continue to do the same thing, then we're not going to grow and persevere. So for me, it's always, um, you know, keep moving, keep going. And that includes just being, remaining positive and looking to the future. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I always say to myself that what ki doesn't kill us make us stronger. So, uh, you said that in Russia, actually, I learned that what doesn't kill you today kills you tomorrow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, that, that's, 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 that's a good point, yes. And, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, as long as you are prepared, you um, even the mistakes which we make at this point, nobody has the right or wrong answer. And I think that it's very important not to be afraid to make mistakes because uh, nobody, nobody knows what is the right decision to make right now in this situation. Nobody has lived through that at such an extent. Uh, so I think that uh, I hope that we will meet in six months and we'll be much better professionals. We have, we'll have stronger communities, happy, empowered women uh, with self-confidence. And I think that we've spoken today about a lot of interesting things, just, just to give a, a, a brief recap that being authentic is one of the most important things, uh, supporting communities and being honest about that. Uh, be ready to share some part of your profit to be able to support the communities so that they will be able to give you back. Honesty is one of the important drivers at the moment and the sense of purpose uh, that 
people are no longer buying for instant gratification. They want to know where they're spending their money. And in the case of all of Plex, where consumers were ready to, sh to, to, to support their hairdresser community. Or in the case of um, uh, Avon, uh, this is also a very important uh, part of how the company that they are spending their buck on is giving back to the community is extremely important. And I think that we will also, uh, we need to embrace our community and our clients. We need to educate them. We need to empower them. And also one of the things that came up in this uh, discussion, I think, that it's not only data that should drive our business, but also heart. And at the same time, uh, we need to be ready to join forces with our competitors. Uh, to be able to provide a better service to the industry so that we will all come out of it stronger and more resilient. And I think that this is, um, so honesty, we are going through transformation much, much faster. We're looking at different ways to motivate our staff. Uh, cooperation and sharing are extremely important. Transparency is probably transparency, honesty, and um and emotions are the things that will get us through this um these difficulties and um uh, we are working in an industry that usually survived all the crises with lipstick effect so there were some articles in press about mascara effects since everybody is wearing face masks so now the it will be a boom in mascara sales, but we look and see that uh, body care is selling uh, very well right now throughout the world because of the self-care um, and people have more time that they can actually afford for the meantime. So hopefully in six months, we will be stronger, resilient, and we'll be able to share our success with the community. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.